And let's let's take it a step farther because you know I, I I certainly respect where John is coming from in terms of viewing the New Testament as the Word of God and possibly even superior to the Old Testament. What if somebody comes along and wants to add to that, say like uh, the Book of Mormon? Well, I mean, me too. I'm I'm Catholic, and and there are a lot of things that I believe as a Catholic that are that I just in a in a hundred years would never ever expect somebody else to involuntarily practice um you know whether it be polygamy whether it be um i mean i i don't personally believe in divorce but i can't tell somebody else they can't get divorced um i don't believe in i don't believe in abortion um but but i can't i mean how you know i I can't force my beliefs on somebody else just like drinking i mean the same thing with drinking i I don't think I don't think I should go and get drunk every night. But if somebody wants to be in their house, and I mean, you know, Big Brother's going to come and watch them and make sure that they're not drunk. I mean, there's just no end to the to the government that and and yes, good. There's bad apples everywhere. There are a lot of good Christians. There are a lot of good Christians that 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 minister. I guess you'd call it passively. But there have been a lot of horrible things done in the name of Jesus. I mean, the Spanish Inquisition. The no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Oh yeah, yeah. One of the one of the main the crimes, I mean, one just of the main on and crimes on. That, that that the church had to enforce was heresy, right? For hundreds of years, right. the church had to enforce capital punishment against heresy, and they never bothered to step back and ask the question of can you have an involuntarily involuntary belief in something, right? Of course, you can't have an involuntary belief in something. Right, you have you have involuntary compliance, but you can never have an involuntary belief in God. You well, can never use force to have somebody believe anything. Well, let's take it another step further, though, Matt, with not making someone believe religiously the way you want. I don't believe in libraries. Oh snap! For a library, right? If I have freedom of conscience to worship the way I want to, I should also have the freedom of conscience to live the way I want to and support what I want to support and not support what I don't want to support. If not enough people are willing to dole out the money to buy a library, too bad. There must be more people. The democratic way would be have the people that want the library. If there's a majority, then they get the library. If there's not a majority, they don't get the library. Okay, okay. so this and, – and hopefully somebody out there will, will do this. I'm on the assembly, so I don't think it's appropriate for me to do it, but – all of these services that the borough provides that cost millions of dollars, somebody should start a voter initiative to reevaluate if these services should still be retained by the borough. But what if what if they still are? I mean, what if we have a voter initiative and they still say, well, yep, we still want library. What if 49 percent of the people say no, but 51 say yes? You're still forcing 49% of the people to do what you want them to do and believe what you want to believe. That's what you get for the privilege of living here in the borough. You're taking away freedom of conscience, which is what we have been fighting for, which is what the... That's the unfortunate. That's the unfortunate side of democracy. There's only <laughs> one winner, one loser. So should there be democracy? No, I mean, that's what it comes no. down. Should there be a democracy? No, there should. There force should be. Is used against the smaller. There should be. Li- the there should be limited dictatorships. <laughs> There is in your own in home. In your own home, you are a limited dictator to do. What you can you do want. whatever you want to in your own home, including getting drunk, including whatever else, as long as that first and foremost rule is 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 followed that you're not hurting somebody else. That's libertarianism, and apparently it's a flawed concept. Well, you know, I, no, but you can't argue with the logic of it. Uh, but that just makes you a sophist, Steve. Remember the part where the disciples went around cutting people's heads off when they didn't believe. Oh wait. wait! I can't find. Oh, that. I don't think oh. that happened. Oh, that well, makes... I thought Jesus said, "Go on to all the nations and force people to be disciples in my name." Mm-hmm. Here's your AK-47. No, I don't think he said that either, John. Yeah. Well, I don't even, what? well, that's like polygamy. There are as many positive references to polygamy as there are negative references to polygamy in the Bible. So King David w- had multiple wives. He, and, uh, A man after God's own heart. Solomon didn't King yeah. didn't Solomon. Yeah. yeah so. they, they had other problems. They had other issues too. But well, uh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, but I no mean, one, if somebody no wants two mother-in-laws, right. why am I? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Part of, you know, part of that. You know, nobody's nobody's perfect, and and that's a that's a confusing word. So let's just say, uh, no one is omniscient, right? No one knows everything. And no one is omnipotent. I do. No one has power <laughs> over everything. And so when we when we talk about you know um, 
I under you know my religion says this, and because I'm right, other people should do it. If we're humble enough to understand that we are we're imperfect beings, we are not all knowing. We should be humble enough to understand that we are never going to perfectly interpret um, whatever our religious book is, right? Exactly. And let's go back to what one of the things that John said before. I know this is like 20 minutes ago, so stay with me on this. But one of the things he said was that he likes to use Scripture to inform a person's conscience and that he shares with them what he believes to be the Word of God. And then it is up to that person to decide in their own mind or heart whether or not they're going to follow what they just heard. I fully agree with that. Yep. The the bottom line is this, is that if you take and you read something and you're fully convinced out of what you read, whether it's out of the Bible or out of the Talmud or out of the Koran, and you're fully convinced that what you just read is correct, you are perfectly free in a free society to go and do what it says as long as you're not hurting somebody else. Yeah, and even to, to run it by other people. And if, exactly. And that's, that's the whole, in the, it, in the Bible, that's what it says. It says if, you know, when you read it, uh, you will know the truth, right? And so, but that's, that's voluntary. That's if you voluntary take what you choice. read and then you decide, then you say there ought to be a law about this. And even if you go and you get a whole bunch of people with you on a voter initiative to go and introduce a law, it's still wrong to impose that view, even if you think it is God's word to impose that on somebody else. You have to convince them. If you can't convince them of the rightness of your position, your position is weak. And so is your Kung Fu. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who is this? Hello. Hey, you're still there. Who is this? Yeah, this is uh, Guy. Uh, Guy. Yeah, you know, Patrick Henry said if, uh, if uh, our country didn't allow God to rule our country, we'd be ruled by uh, tyrants. And then also, uh, I forget which... Well, the main belief of the founders was that uh, in the Constitution that uh, if um, the Constitution wouldn't work and our government wouldn't work uh, if the people weren't uh, moral or moral or just or uh, God-fearing people in our nation. And uh, so, so then you see today that there, people are just wanting to do whatever they feel you know, right in their own eyes. With, you know, it could be, uh, you know, well, I want to I wanna have uh, child pornography in my house or abduct kids or whatever, you know. I mean, do what, you can't just do whatever you want to do. Uh, and uh, the way we, we are, what's happening now... Did, did you miss everything we just said about not hurting somebody else? Can... Um, can can we have Josh talk about religious freedom in in uh, I mean the, the, you even read some stuff about the the Puritans that you were telling me about. Right. Uh, I thought that was that was rather interesting because we're, we're told that the Puritans came here for religious freedom. Can you tell us how, what they thought about religious freedom? The re- religious freedom of the Puritans was to absolutely forcefully make everyone believe that the way that they wanted them to believe. The Pilgrims were the same way. They left supposed uh, religious tyranny in England and came here and enforced religious tyranny. If you did not obey the church, the civil government came down on you and they chopped people's ears off, they hung people, they tortured people, they put you on a cart and whipped you as they went through every town in the colony. Religious freedom is what it is all about in the very first place. We cannot have re- freedom of conscience and freedom to do free. We can't have freedom without the freedom to believe the way you want religiously. You have to have that freedom. You cannot enforce and force a religious view on someone else. Because if you look at the progress, take the Bill of Rights. You have 10, 10 Bill of Rights or 10 Amendments or whatever. It starts off with freedom of religion. Because until they had freedom to worship as they wanted to or not worship, that is where they got their uh, theory, their thought, to believe, well, then I also don't need... If I have the right to believe this, I should also have the right to protect myself. I should also have the right to be secure in my home. When you take that away, the rest of the Bill of Rights is gone. Matt? Well, here, you know, usually when I get into these debates over religion, what what I like to to remind people is that God gave people free will. Any Christian will say God gave people free will. And and I believe that. So if God is willing to trust other men with free will, why should I take that away? And if it and and 
if they're going to make the wrong decision, God allows people to make the wrong decisions. How how morally just it, or how how favored does God look on somebody if they're forced to do the right thing? If someone isn't given a choice on what to do, th- then there is no conscious decision. It, it's it's a robotic movement. Um, you know, if if uh, if someone isn't allowed to m- make a choice to be right or wrong, then making the right choice it wasn't a choice to begin with. Yeah, if you can't not believe in something, then you can't believe in it. It's the it's the whole thing. It's it's like, yeah, exactly. Four five eight talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning, this is Mark. Mark, what's on your mind? Well, um, it comes back to the age old question of how do we legislate morality? And Christ did tell his uh, disciples to buy themselves a sword, but put it up until the time of the end. So praise the Lord and pass the ammo out here. <laughs> Thanks, the call. <laughs> All right. Four five eight dog is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? It's Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Uh, did Lincoln have the right to use force to force the Confederate states to remain in the Union? No. No. Yeah, secession, actually, secession down to the individual was a uh, part of the the idea of a republic. Secession was baked into the... So in a sense, you could say that from the forma- from the, the time of the Civil War on, the United States of America really has uh, ceased to exist. Yeah, it we, actually, we're no we longer a federation. No United we're States not... of America. There was there was a federation of United States. Little U, United as in combined. Right, but it was United a federation. States. It wasn't the United States of America. It was a federation of United States. Well, you look at how we've changed too from having a feder from federal law. They still call it federal, but really we have national laws now. Right, and what it, what is a federation? I mean, this is one of the things that you don't learn anywhere i mean you get you got to learn on you don't learn it in private school either mm-hmm. I, I didn't learn it in home school it does uh, require feder- however that you know how to read you have to know how to read and you have to understand latin which the founders did but a federation is a basically a loose non-binding gathering of of parties who want to participate we're so, coming up at the end of the show here already i know it goes by wow. fast here uh, do we have an action point for yeah today, you know John? i would say since we talked about religion a lot that people should go and read john locke's a letter concerning toleration absolutely uh, which is, uh, we've had that on our blog, we'll bump that back up to the front page, because it's it, if we're going to talk about natural law and, and religion and freedom, um, that was a, a pretty good document as far as that goes. So you can Google it too, John Locke, Letter Regarding a letter toleration. Concerning toleration. Or it's on our web blog. I've, I'm starting a little, trying to start a little series on religious freedom on the web Patri- blog too. Patriots yeah, the Lament. website is patriotslament.blogspot.com. And email, uh, contact if folks want to email us here. Patriotslament at gmail.com. All right, gentlemen, that takes us to the end of the program. Thanks for coming in again, and we will see you again next Saturday right here for Patriots Lament. Coming up next, it's Health Talk. Thank you, Matt, for being here today. Always appreciate having you in here. And uh, Dave Giesel, of course, with Campaign for Liberty, and Josh Bennett from uh, Bighorn Enterprises. I'm Steve Floyd, and uh, it's time for me to go lie down for a while. Ran seven and a half miles this morning, and I am a sore puppy. All right, we'll see you next time (laughs) right here on KFAR. It's local talk radio.